Welcome to RPV City Talk. RPV City Talk is brought to you by the City of Rancho Palos Verdes to inform the community on recent city matters. RPV City Talk is a weekly show that features the RPV Mayor, City Council, or City Employees. Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to RPV City Talk on the Road. Today we're going to talk about building and safety issues as the month of May was Building Safety Month. I'm here at Hess Park outside the community room where the Peninsula Seniors are gathering for their weekly lecture series. And today's lecture is being presented by RPV's building and safety officials as they will talk about keeping the community safe and prepared. Well, we're here today to give a presentation to the Peninsula Seniors. What we wanted to do is explain to them about what we do each day and how we may be able to help them with, with the, what they may need in their houses or in their neighbors' houses. Typically, we have issues that they are interested in related to fire safety, energy, green building, backyard and pool safety, and we're here to talk about all those things today. Well, Peninsula Seniors has a lot of programs that have been um, implemented uh, throughout ma for many years now, I believe over 20 years. Um, I am just the lecture coordinator for the Peninsula Seniors. Uh, the lectures take place every Wednesday morning at Fred Hess Community Park at 1030 a.m. and that is every Wednesday. So uh, the type of lectures that we try to offer are topics that would be of interest to the senior population. Uh, the lectures are free and anyone is welcome to come and to attend a, a lecture. We have some very uh, interesting speakers uh, coming up lined up for June, July, August, but we're still on the hunt for new speakers. You mentioned that it, it's free to the public. Do you need to be a member of Peninsula Seniors to attend or anyone can come? Anyone can come and attend the lectures. Perhaps if you enjoy the lectures, perhaps you'll decide to join Peninsula Seniors. So we do welcome everybody. If people are interested in joining Peninsula Seniors, want more in the lecture series, what's the best way to get information? Uh, call the Peninsula Seniors office or uh, find the Peninsula Seniors online at pvseniors.org. Anything you want to add, anything you're particularly interested in? I know you're, you grew up here locally, and I don't know about in terms of your own questions you might have about building safety issues. Uh, well, I would like to mention that um, we're, Gwen Shotwell, the president of SpaceX, is coming in June. Uh, Bob Eckert, the recently retired CEO of Mattel, is coming, uh, I believe it's in August. And we have um, a very famous photographer coming named Mark Vieira in December. Um, and we're constantly filling in. We have a lot of great lectures. And um, so far, um, just in my short tenure with the program, um, the seniors that are attending seem to enjoy it very, very much. What brought you here to today's series about building safety? What are you interested in learning about? Well, I was, came primarily because I always come. I enjoy the young lady who runs it, and uh, there are always good cookies. What do you enjoy most about being a member of Peninsula Seniors? Oh, there are so many things. There are wonderful trips. I go to the writer's group once a week and to yoga twice a week. And uh, the Peninsula Seniors just have so many good things going that... I can't say enough good things about it. Well, it's a great honor to be joined by a retired Navy commander, Cecil Fleener, who's here with Peninsula Seniors. Today, Cecil, they're going to talk about building and safety. Does this topic interest you? Of course it does. Yes, indeed. What kinds of questions, what kinds of things are you concerned about regarding building and safety? Uh, interested in learning. Right now they're talking about things, just making sure you have smoke alarms in the house, things like that to keep yourself safe. Yes, we, we do that, and that's, that's good. I represent the International Code Council, their government relations uh, uh, section, and uh, uh, our main purpose is we represent 58,000 uh, members of building officials, mainly, that make up uh, uh, most of the United States. Our building codes adopted in all 50 states, and our plumbing codes adopted in uh, 35 states across the country, and our codes are adopted in, in many places across the world also. So we're here uh, celebrating uh, Rancho Palos Verdes, uh, uh, their uh, contribution to building a safety month that we do uh, nationwide in celebration of uh, looking out after the, the public. Talk about the sort of the topics that you're really focused on this month of May for building safety, everything from you know pool hazards to fire to disaster planning, anything like that. What are you, what are you out there talking to the public about? Well, mainly awareness and all, and all aspects of that, whether it be fire, whether it be pool safety, backyard safety, uh, all of that, just to remind the public of the dangers and the hazards that are out there and that, that they can look to their, their local building departments for help and guidance. 
What will be your message today as you talk to Peninsula seniors, specific issues for seniors? Well, get to know their building departments and, uh, and reach out. There's a lot of help, as in this city. They do so much outreach to the community, and most people are just not aware of that. What are some of the, not, the biggest things that people tend to violate when it comes to safety codes that people don't even realize that they're violating, maybe? Well, probably smoke detectors is one of the huge things, which I think they're going to give away a lot uh, today to some of the uh, uh, people that are here. But those in, in, in keeping batteries in them and, uh, and checking them and beginning aware of, uh, of what's going on within their house and their, their built environment. Any other specific tips you'd like to, to address now that you want the community to really think about in terms of as they plan um, in, their, in their own homes? Well, pool safety is, is a huge thing, especially in Southern California, and to make sure that the, the gates are properly locked and secured and, uh, uh, and those types of items for pool safety. And again, if people want to find out more about safety and uh, building codes, they can go right to your website. Right, that's ICC www.icc.org. Uh, My message for today is to let people know, number one, we have hazards here, but it's not something to be particularly concerned with. They need to prepare for them in case there's an earthquake or other hazards, but mainly they just need to focus on what their day-to-day -day life is and not worry about things. Uh, too many people become afraid of earthquakes, landslides, and since we have those here, I uh, want to make sure everybody knows that it's not something that you need to be afraid of. You need to focus on how to prepare for them, have water, other things such as that. Understand that in a major earthquake you will have issues with getting back and forth to the store, or off the peninsula actually. So they need to be ready for that. You mentioned you're a geologist that works with 10 other cities. Obviously we have issues very unique to RPV. Talk a little bit about them, obviously, what you've seen over the years. Well, uh, RPV, number one, it's isolated. I mean, there's really only three ways in and out off the peninsula, which has its own issues at that point. Also, we have one of the largest landslides in the continent of the United States. It's ongoing. It uh, isn't going away, so we have to learn to live with it. We also have all the bluff top areas, and unbeknownst to most people, we have a lot of other landslides in the city. So. Anything you want to add? I know, again, this is Building Safety Month that you can want to push again with the residents regarding oh. being safe. Yeah, one of the things I want to make sure the residents understand, when they decide they want to add on to their house or do things in their backyard and things like that, there is a permit process. As part of that process, we investigate whether or not they need geotechnical reports or soils reports or geology reports. Those are very important in some instances. And if they don't go through the main process, they won't know. They may build something that is not really safe. So it's very important that they do go through the permit process and they will be helped all the way through it. And the city's very good at that. Today I'm going to focus on the importance of having smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms installed in the proper locations in, in the individual residences. Uh, by California code, uh, people are required to install smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms whenever a building permit is issued that has a valuation of $1,000 or more. So in order to final the permits, we have to verify that smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms are installed. We do that one of two ways. We can either do a visual check of the house, or we have a form that we give to the homeowner that they can check off and verify and confirm that they have the smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms installed as required. Are you um, surprised that often many people aren't in compliance, or are you feeling the opposite, that most people are in compliance? Uh, most people know that they, they require them. They just aren't cognizant of the fact that where they need them. Uh, most people have one or two in their house, whereas smoke alarms are required. You're required to have one in every bedroom and one in the hallways adjacent to the bedrooms. And carbon monoxide alarms are required in the areas adjacent to the bedrooms. Anything you want to add that you want the community to know? I know obviously when building and safety, you're out there, you're the ones that are issuing permits, you're out there, you know, dealing with code violations, and you don't necessarily want to be thought of as the bad guys. You're the good guys trying to keep everybody safe. Yes, we are out there to ensure that the, the building is done to, to code, and we are not out there to give the, the builders or the homeowners a hard time just to ensure that things are done properly. I'm now being joined by Michael Weiner. You're with Building and Safety. You are a building inspector for the city of RPV. We're here with Peninsula Seniors. What will be your message, your topic to focus on regarding safety today? 
Um, well, today I'm doing basically for disaster mitigation, things like earthquakes or fire or storms, uh, maybe like we had recently back east, um, just trying to help people prepare for those. So what would be some of your advice, some of your tips? How do we get better prepared? Well, basically everybody, uh, they say the minimum you should have is at least three days worth of supplies, emergency supplies, things like that. Actually, it's probably better if everybody has almost at least as much as a month or four, four weeks to six weeks worth of supply. Uh, as you remember from back east, uh, there were people that were without electricity, water, and basic services for weeks, even, even a couple of months on end in certain areas. So basically it's just to try to tell everybody to prepare. Um, properly have food, emergency supplies, medical supplies, things like that. Of course, a lot of water. Correct, yes. Especially and in including your pets and things like that. So because we're up on, on the hill here, we're, we're sort of isolated and that all of our services come from down below the hill. Uh, you don't really have our own, you know, water and power generation and things like that. So you almost have to kind of keep it and have it handy and uh, just for yourself, I guess. As you're on the community and you're seeing it, going to visit different homes, you're doing inspections and whatnot, are you surprised how many people don't seem prepared? <laughs> yes, actually, yeah, there's a lot of people that don't. Um, it's, yes, you should. Um, again, it basically, I think the best is, is to have at least a one month supply of emergency food, emergency water, uh, medical supplies, you know, prescriptions and things like that, you know, if, uh, medical issues and, you know, for things that you should have. My name is Sandra Ishman and I'm the permit technician for the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. I've been here th six years, going on my seventh year. <laughs> and what I do is I issue the building permits at the public counter in the community development department. I also take in building plans, uh, walk customers and residents through the process, um, of course, I work with contractors, architects, engineers um, from all over uh, that are assigned to a project here. So it's just that I oversee the project, I guess, from start to finish, as I guess you could say. And we coordinate, I coordinate uh, those projects with Public Works and with um, Planning Department as well. So you're a very familiar face at City Hall when people come in. Um, talk about what your message will be today. My message today is um, is centered around informing the the senior residents of our city about um, how to go about hiring a contractor when they have a project to to be done or they would like to be done. Also, to look out for scams because of the uh, economic climate that we're in now, there are more and more reports of our seniors being taken advantage of uh, by people soliciting door to door. And unfortunately, some of our seniors, they end up giving these people cash, which is a definite no-no. So that's going to be my primary focus is to uh, press that point, to be very wary of door-to-door -door solicitation. But then the other part of my speech or my presentation will be about uh, backyard and pool safety and uh, to keep our little ones safe and young adults, you know, and to always keep them uh, supervised, even if they're young adults, to never leave children un unattended. Because we are getting into the warm weather season, people will be out in their pools. What is rule number one? I mean, you have to have an enclosed pool, correct, with a fence? You do. You have to have that pool enclosure, which is at least the minimum of five feet in height, which is non-assailable, which means not climbable in any way, for a child to be able to get a foothold to lift themselves up and go over the fencing. And then also to have a proper gate. The gate must swing away from the pool and be self-latching and self-closing. So there needs to be a spring on the back of that gate to help it shut. And then a latch that will catch to kind of semi-lock it uh, so that way no small person or child or unattended teenager can just push it open and gain access to someone's backyard and take a swim, <laughs> you know, unawares to, to the homeowners. If you're a homeowner and you have a pool that's not in compliance, somebody reports you a neighbor, what does that mean? It's, it's a fine, you just have to uh, bring your, obviously your, your pool up to compliance. We work with them to get it in compliance because the pool is not going anywhere. <laughs> so we'd rather have them in, in compliance than to find them. We have a very high fire hazard severity zone in the city. So that's something that came into place in 2000, 2008. And there's a, uh, some unique things related to that and those are specific to areas that are in fire hazard zones and one of them would be for example tempered glass windows so if an ember were to go against the window it wouldn't crack the pane and then enter the house uh, ignition resistant exterior construction for example they'd have uh, stucco or some other approved exterior material to keep the house from uh, igniting 
And then we also have issues with carbon monoxide alarms because that's a fairly new requirement, so not everyone has heard about it. Now, we have actually going to be giving away some of those alarms today to some of the seniors here, so we'll be able to actually help them so they'll have them in their house. Um, I know well, I saw those look like quite the goodie bags out there. You've got all, a nice mix of things, obviously, to help keep everybody here today safe. Yeah, we thought we'd give out some things because we only have a short time to be able to talk with them, and there's so much that we wanted to tell them about. So we have some literature for them to take home and read, as well as, like I mentioned, the alarms that they can take home and install if they're missing them or give them to their neighbor who may need one. And uh, we also have some uh, uh, shopping bags they can use when they go to the market. And we, we just thought those things would be nice to give out. For homeowners out there that they want to make sure that their their homes are safe, what is the best way to find out? Like, what do I need to do? do? What do I need to get a permit for? I mean, you and I had a conversation the other day that many might not know that you technically need to get a permit for a hot water heater or for your dishwasher. Oh, that's funny you asked that because that's specifically one of the items we're going to be talking about today, and that's one of the handout items we'll be giving out to each and every senior that attends today so that we can spread the word about what needs a permit and what doesn't. And we know that over time, even people that aren't contemplating construction typically need us for something because their roof will go bad or their sewer line will plug up or break and they will need to replace it and that, that needs an inspection and a per permit. Or their water heater, as you mentioned, goes south. Those typically only last 10 years or so before they leak or they break down and, and they'll need to replace it. And that's when we become involved when we're there to help them. And the community here is very educated. So we don't have that much difficulty with them dealing with housing issues because they pretty much know what's expected. They see what's around them and they're used to seeing fairly compliant construction. We don't have a lot of substandard housing and code enforcement issues that we see. There are occasionally some. But we're really here today to spread the gospel about building and safety. And we've been doing this for the past six years that I've been here at various locations. We've been out to the Cornerstone Elementary School and spoken. We've uh, been on your RPV TV channel to spread the word about it. And now we're here today to talk to the seniors. The sewer needs to be replaced or the water heater goes bad or the roof, you know, over time wears out and needs to be replaced. And those are all things that when you do those types of work and replace those types of things, we get involved because we check what the workmen do to make sure that they're doing it according to code and according to the city standards. When we think, I'm going to talk about geologic hazards. And when we think about geologic hazards here, we usually think of things like faulting, earthquakes, tsunamis, uh, landslides, tornadoes, floods things like that, having to do with the earth, and there are hazards that can happen almost anywhere. In this area, we usually think about just landslides and earthquakes. From a geologic hazard perspective, expansive soils is the number one cause of damage in the United States. What kind of soil? Expansive. You know these clay soils you have? Yeah. When they get wet. That, yeah, they expand. Yeah. They cause problems everywhere, on this hill, all over the place. So what we really think about for hazards is faulting, earthquakes, and landslides. And guess what? We have those here. Well, you were asking a lot of questions today about building and safety. What did you think about the presentation? I thought it was very informative. And... Uh, uh, things were brought up that you uh, don't normally think about, and the uh, the self-reliant portion. It's important for everybody to know that uh, you in, ultimately are re responsible for your own uh, well-being. I thought it was really wonderful. I was afraid it was just going to be about permits, but it wasn't. It covered a lot of areas. It covered. Uh, safety, earthquake, all sorts of things and supplies that we need to have. And most of us aren't aware of that. And the fact that we need to be supplied for 30 days, that's very interesting. So at home, what kinds of precautions are you taking in terms of being prepared? Well, I do keep water there and uh, animal food, you know, cat food. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I have... Um, flashlights. I'm careful about that now. I mean, I'm really getting a lot more aware because when we're told it could be 30 days, we really need to think about it and no one will be here to help us. And that's the other thing most people are not aware of.
Okay, talking a lot about safety, but also about like permits. I don't know if you're in a situation when you find you've, you've needed to go to the city for permits or anything like that. What kinds of things were news to you? Well, I, I'm a real estate agent, or I was, you know, I, I've worked up here for over 40 years, so I'm fairly familiar with that. And I think that it was very interesting for a lot of people because they didn't know they needed permits when they change water heaters, when they change windows to put in air conditioning and all these things. And it's really necessary to have a permit for our own safety. And I think, I think that, that they brought out a lot of points about our safety and why they're there to help us. It's very good. Now, if you have any questions regarding building and safety issues, just go onto the city's website at palaceverdes.com slash RPV. That'll do it for this edition of RPV City Talk on the Road. I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Thanks for watching.